I hear from people all the time who like understand that it doesn't work for there to be nothing greater than our own mind and conscience and consciousness um, and who know that the world is not just a block of wood and or a hunk of meat to be moved around at will according to pleasure. Um, and so who basically accept the necessity of a, an ultimate reality and the necessity of an ultimate reality being God. And I get all these messages from people who say, like on locals, you know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with all of that. Um, but I cannot, for the life of me, make the leap from that kind of ascent to any kind of emotional connection to the forms of the church. To When I go into church and I get lectured at and I stand up and down and I cross myself and I do these things, right? Um, in some ways, it seems like what you're saying is that Coleridge alone understood um, that that sort of personal connection with the divine in nature is kind of the bridge between like, I know there's a God, now how do I find him in the sort of traditions of the church, if you see what I'm saying. You know, I, I want to go back on, to answer this. I want to go back to what you were talking about is this famous toast that they made where they said confusion to mathematics and here's to Newton and confusion to mathematics. Uh, and they, they use Newton as the symbol of science and they were making fun of Newton. And that grew out of a conversation about Newton's experiments with uh, prisms and the rainbow. Now, Keats would have known this. Keats would have known about this. So he was joking. Uh, and and mm -hmm. Wordsworth probably would have known it as well. Because what Newton discovered was that rainbows are real. The breaking up of light is a real phenomenon. But only the human eye can see them. Right. And each person has the experience of the rainbow unto himself. But nobody who experiences a rainbow sees a tractor trailer or sees, you know, a, a grain of corn. What they see is a rainbow. And that's the symbol that... Uh, Wordsworth uses, he writes a famous poem, my heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky, uh, because, because he realizes that this experience of the world that we're having is a continuation. It's the eighth day of creation, right? And so when you start to think about that, you start to think of that this, this life inside me, this rainbow that I see, this beautiful flower that I see, this love that I feel, is a reaction to reality. You're an interchange with something. You start to think, well, I'm an interchange with what? What is the wholeness, the whole experience um, uh, that I'm having? And you start to realize, yeah, it's an experience of the divine. Only, in interestingly enough, only Christianity puts that experience into a, unifies that experience of man and, and God uh, into one thing. Uh, Judaism, I, I was born a Jew, and Judaism has a kind of separation. I'm viewing the burning bush. Jesus is the human version of the burning bush, the life and death uh, that goes on forever. Um, and, and, and Buddhism kind of says, you know what, I'm backing away from my experience of life because it, it's too painful uh, in some ways. So this, this thing that they were finding was a specifically Christian thing, was that in my internal world, my internal world is a collaboration with something and it is my life. It is my life. This is the problem with scientism is that scientism wants to solve the problem of being human by stopping humans from being human. You know, it wants to get right. rid of get rid of your pain, get rid of your experience, get rid of your moral sense. And what these poets are saying, no, no, it, it, the moral sense is the whole point. It's not that there shouldn't be mm. science. It's that science doesn't work unless it's making you more human, not less. It's not that, uh, you know, it's they want, it's, many of them wanted to get rid of marriage and found out that that really didn't work very well, especially for women, you know? And so the, right. it was the fact that traditions were things that had been built up over time through the human experience of life. They were not to be discarded, even though they, we could advance. And that was Burke's great insight that we could advance in keeping with our traditions. So, you know, I think that the thing about um, Christianity is too often it is sold by don't do this, don't do that, you know, don't do any of these things. Instead of this is what you're trying to accomplish. What you're trying to accomplish is the experience of life at a level of ultimate reality and ultimate joy. And, and yeah, there are things you can't do, you know, if you want to experience that. Drunkenness is not going to help. You know, being untrue to your word is not going to help. Being unkind is not going to help. Uh, hating people is not going to help. Once you get rid of all those things, that experience is there for you. Uh, and and that, that experience of life as a conduit to meaning and holiness is there. And, and so really you should begin with what am I looking for, with the positive question of what am I looking for? And that's, that's why I love these poets, because that's where they began, because they didn't have God to start with.